Good evening and welcome to the Bellevue City Council meeting, Monday, March 14, 2016. Thank you all for being here this evening. The first item on the agenda is if we could please all stand for the, the Pledge of Allegiance. And then please remain standing for the invocation by Father Denny Henneman of St. Mary's Catholic Church, 2302 Crawford Street. This will probably be his last invocation for us before retirement. So thank you for everything, Father. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good and loving God, we give you thanks for giving us yet another day and an evening to serve you and serving our community. Guide the members of this council with a spirit of understanding which might lead them to their very best judgments. We live in a world of human failure and broken promises. May they be tolerant of the faults of each other because they're aware of their own shortcomings. And bless everyone with a quiet respect for the diversity of opinions to be found here. Through honest dialogue and compassionate listening, may these, your servants, search all the avenues open to them to meet tonight's challenges with integrity and justice. May all that is done be loving God for your greater honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for all you've done. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Modry? Here. Mrs. Blood? Present. Item 2A, this meeting will be conducted according to the Open Meetings Act, posted the entry to the council chambers. Item three, approval of agenda, consent agenda, minutes and advisory committee reports. 3A, approval of agenda. Councilman Blood. Motion to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Carmichael. Any discussion? See none, please vote. Can you revote? My board wasn't on. Paul. All voted yes. Thank you. 3B, approval of consent agenda. Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second by Councilwoman Blood. Any discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Takes us to item number four, approval of claims is under consent. Item number five, special presentation. There are none. Item number six, liquor license. 6A. St. Matthew's Catholic Community Church. Is there some? Welcome. Thank you. I'm Scott Eversole, one of the teachers and a parishioner at St. Matthew, and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Uh, it's an annual fundraiser that we've moved back to the uh, school and the community, community facilities um, to uh, save on uh, some of the costs that we had in the past year. So uh, we appreciate the approval of it and uh, for, as we continue to, to grow and, uh, and hopefully get our church built here very soon as we pay off our debt. And this is what that money goes towards along with the community and our school. Thank you. I'll open for public hearing at this time. Anyone wishing to speak on this issue, please do so at this time. See none, I'll close the public hearing. Councilwoman Blood. Yes, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend approval to the Nebraska Liquor Commission for this application of a special designated liquor license to sell beer, wine, and distilled spirits at a fundraiser in the St. Matthew School Gymnasium, 12210 South 36th Street, Suite B, on April 8, 2016, from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. Second. Second by Mr. Cook.
Five yes votes, one abstention. Thank you. <clears throat> Item seven, ordinance for adoption, third reading. <clears throat> Sabrina, please read the ordinance. <clears throat> Ordinance number 3844. An ordinance to create a new Article 9 in Chapter 28 of the Bellevue Municipal Code dealing with streets and sidewalks to provide for an arterial street improvement program for street improvements within the, city's, the city of Bellevue's zoning jur jurisdiction, to provide for special funds for designing and constructing such arterial street improvements, to provide for the management and expenditure of such funds, and to specifically provide for certain fees for new residential, commercial, and industrial construction permits, and to provide for the effective date of this ordinance. Councilman Blood. Yes, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 3844. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Mr. Mr. Sullivan. Uh, we had talked about this, I believe, either public hearing or at the first reading. Um, that generally that the uh, building uh, community was in support of this. Um, I probably shouldn't have painted that there's some implementation issues. They wanted to uh, provide some red line to the agreement uh, and bring this back to you in two weeks. Generally, what they're requesting are things that uh, I think, for the most part, we can live with. Um, but we wanted to go through that and see if we could get that done. So I actually would ask you that we could have a motion to postpone this uh, at, at least for two weeks while we try to resolve those issues. Additionally, I think as we had this meeting, just to inform you, uh, we found that um, it would be beneficial for us to create a little better communication with those developers. And we are going to plan uh, essentially semi-annual meetings with whoever developers want to meet, discuss what building code changes and other issues that are coming up in the city uh, or have passed in the last six months, and also get their general impression of how things are proceeding and giving their feedback and try to work more in partnership with them uh, so that uh, Bellevue's an attractive place for the developers to come. Councilman Blood. With that, I would be willing to withdraw my motion and make a new motion. I'll council members in meetings such as that and I know we can only include a limited amount but to make sure that we're all informed of what's going on so we don't have surprises like this. Um, with that, I'd make the motion uh, that we postpone this issue until uh, Monday, March 28th, City Council meeting. Second. second. Just, uh, uh, Mr. Preister, if you'd withdraw your second on that motion, then we'd be good to go. I will withdraw my second. So we have a motion from Councilman Blood and, and a, was a second, Mr. Preister? On postponing. I think. Maybe Mr. Carmichael made the second. I was just raising my hand to speak. So the second on the um, postponing is Mr. Carmichael. Question. And discussion. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, when you're talking, Pat, are you talking about people from the city meeting with the developers? Or are you talking about the developers coming back here as in like a hearing that there, there wasn't anybody here at that time? No, th this would just simply be an opportunity on a, on a semi-annual basis to open the doors to the developers and uh, voice their concerns, uh, raise any issues that they may have, things that are coming uh, to the forefront. Also some issues with some developers that have some pre-sold lots uh, and this fee wasn't included in, the, in that cost. So probably just those little things that maybe from a city standpoint we don't think about uh, that they can give us some uh, uh, direction or at least their insights on it. It's not, not, a, not an avenue for uh, the city to give it away, but to understand how it affects them. Um, I, guess, uh, I guess my question is that input you're going to get, you're going to get from the developers to the city and then on the next meeting or the next two weeks, It'll be back up to the third reading again on which we would vote or not vote on it? Is that yes, correct? we hope to have um, 
some uh, red lines potentially that we're going to correct and there was already some things that Jeff Roberts and I talked about that we would see as changes that need to be made. Uh, they kind of put one attorney in charge of getting us back a red line and I know that he uh, has been um, dealing with a father-in-law who's passing away and so he's been delayed on getting that to us. Um, so hopefully we can be ready to roll uh, on the meeting in two weeks but I can't Thank you, Mayor. I would just also want to make sure Mr. Roberts is fully included and that things are not done without his input and that he is uh, not just included, but certainly he has a perspective in making sure our public works work smoothly, that we have the funds to do things. So I'm concerned, and, and when planning is involved too, because I think planning has some uh, oversight over a lot of the things the developers do. So. I understand, I appreciate the discussions, but as we include more people, we need to keep our key city staff involved. Mr. Berlowitz. Yeah, I, I might add a little bit in response to Don, what you're bringing up and what Pat's indicated. Going forward, this would also then provide communication so as we're developing our one and six year street plan, as well as our capital improvement plan, that would reflect uh, that type of communication and as to where funds might be put that uh, is in line with what would be proposed in the ordinance. So there would be obviously some some balance in there and, and so it would reflect that uh, going forward. Are there any discussion? Eight two five two Cedar Island Road for MUD for one hundred dollars, Mr. Berlowitz. Yeah, I, I know you're probably going to approve this because it's a good deal. Yeah, just to give you a little background, uh, probably about four years ago, um, um, MUD had approached the city in regard to acquiring this particular uh, building, which was no longer being used by them. At that time, they wanted us to agree to purchase a CNG vehicle in exchange for the property, which would have been somewhere around 18 to 20,000. Um, we were not um, open to that. They then reduced it about a year later to 10,000. And I told them since the building had no use to them and they had no access except uh, with an easement through our property that now they have come back and, and offered what is a reasonable figure at $100, we would at some point probably use this building for storage at that um, the shop. So um, that's why it's now before you to move forward to acquire it. Councilwoman Blood. What is the square footage of the building? Estimate. I'm not going to hold you to it. I'm, I'm going to have to defer to Jeff. Any wild no. idea? But enough for that? I don't think so. As I recall, Early, it's not very big. It's, it's a brick there. structure, but it's not real large. Mr. Roberts? Yeah, I don't know what the square footage is. It's not a very large building. Yeah, it's pretty uh, small, Carol, really. I just I don't have the exact square footage. Just put my radar up just it, in it, case. Really, it actually had equipment where they injected odorant into the system, so it's not very large, but it's something that we could use for some storage purposes. Yeah, it also have to be all cleaned up and get all the yeah. chemicals and the odors out of yeah. it too. So. Yeah, again, that's why we weren't, I, I told them either give it to us or give us a fee that's a uh, purchase price that's very small. So, Thank Mr. You. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Jeff, I got a real quick question. On the warranty deed copy we got, it makes reference to it's an abandoned odorant building that has some residue in it and that uh, any liability, any if this is disturbed or released, that the liability is on the city. Is there any significant liability or concern? No, I don't believe so. Thank you. I'll make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to open for public hearing on this item. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please do so at this time. See none. I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll
All voted yes. Thank you. Item 10B, request for approval of the amended redevelopment plan for lots 1 through 12 and out lots A through G, Cornhusker Point, Applicant Royce Cornhusker LLC, location Fort Crook Road and Cornhusker Road. I'll open for public hearing at this time. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council, Larry Jobin, 11440 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of the applicant in this case and also the developer. Uh, what happened here was there was some unforeseen construction, demolition debris uh, that didn't show up in the initial testings of the property. It caused the TIF eligible expenses to increase by about a half million dollars. The, the good news in all of this is that there was an opportunity to build a multifamily apartment complex on the lower Wilson, which increased the value in an amount sufficient to overcome that increase in the TIF eligible expenses. So this amendment to the redevelopment plan uh, provides for that. So I'm here to answer any questions. Of course, we'll have to have a redevelopment agreement after this plan is approved by the council, which will come before you that memorializes this amendment to the plan. Are there any questions from the council? Mr. Modry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, Larry. Uh, are there any concerns or are there any provisions that will be made for the uh, railroad tracks going through that area with a, an apartment complex and noise for the uh, residents there? You know, it, I know it's an active line. You know, people live next to railroad tracks. If you look, look at, think about Soma in uh, downtown Omaha, which you have, those are condominium um, properties that are actually, you know, 250 to $350,000 a piece, and they're right next to the adjacent uh, active line. So I think people live with railroad tracks next to them all the time. I think it's just something you get used to. But no, there's no, been no change in the plan or with respect to the railroad. I, I live there in Avery Hill, so Got train, trains are noticeable. Exactly. Mr. Carmichael. Thank you, Mayor. Larry, um, <clears throat> there was an analysis done that didn't catch this. You've done, obviously, some, some further exploratory investigation that caught this? Well, no, actually, um, grading the property, okay. they yeah. encountered the demolition debris. It was under the, the soil when they were digging out and um, doing the grading for the site that they came across quite a bit of additional rubble and construction debris that was you know, left there by the former owner that they did not know about. Do you anticipate that we may run into this on other areas of this, this site? My understanding, I don't know. The, the developer couldn't be here tonight because they had a, a funeral to go to, but so they... But, but this project will only support so much in TIF, so we could really only capture what it is, uh, as far as the development's concerned. They're going to have to clean up the site in order to that they intend to, to do at uh, both the lower and upper Wilson. So there may be additional costs, but these are the only costs that we can recapture through the TIF because that's all the project will support based upon the projected valuation. Thank you. Councilman Blood. Personally, I want to thank the organization for amending the redevelopment plan. Um, I actually think it's very exciting because I look at Midtown, I look at Exarban, you're putting in population next to the new retail area, that gives them a built-in customer base. That's a positive thing. So I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I'll go ahead and open for public hearing. Anyone else who would like to speak on this, please do so at this time. See none, I'll close the public hearing. Councilman Blood. Yes, Mayor, I'd like to make a, a motion that we approve this request of the amended redevelopment plan for lots 1 through 12 and out lots A through G, Cornhusker Point being the applicant, Royce Cornhusker LLC, with the location of Fort Crick Road in Cornhusker. Second. resolution of approval for the redevelopment. Well, then I would make the addition that we approve resolution number 201609. Thank you. And second by, Ms. by Mr. Preister. Any discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Item 10C, request to declare lot 8B2 and portion of lot 8B1, Southdale Edition, as blighted and substandard. Applicant Big John's Car Wash, LLC, location 12709 South 28th Avenue. Good. I'll open for public hearing at this time. Good evening. Um, I, I did provide some last minute uh, input to the council. I want to apologize for that and uh, suggest that uh, anytime a a uh, package like this has been sitting on a uh, city staff member's desk for five months. There's really no reason for last minute comments coming out on a Thursday before a Monday meeting. Um, you know, maybe you guys could look at, I mean, your job's hard enough going through this whole packet that you get on Thursday. trying to review things so did want to apologize for the last minute input but you know it, it was driven by conditions we do not control so our application is for blighted and substandard um, we're in the 25th and Capehart area an area that's uh, you know lagging in uh, commercial commerce you know in the city right now and this is a project that uh, is gonna spur some growth in that area. Uh, we've taken a site that was the uh, location of a uh, previous fuel spill, and we've just, uh, the 10th of March, received a letter from the city declaring the cleanup effort successful, and we're ready for redevelopment at this point. So this is a very small uh, TIF request. I think we're in the 60 to 80,000 range, so. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this is really nothing, but my lender has asked that I go through the process, so we are doing it. So um, I think we've answered all the questions in the packet we submitted, but I'm here to answer any additional questions that any of you have. Thank you. The questions from the council? See none. Is there any? I always find it suspect when half the council gets information and the other half of the council does not get information. Um, regardless of who had it supposedly on their desk for five months, that's not even the issue. Um, I read through, as I'm sure all council people did, the information from the, the planning commission, which is always a stepping stone before it gets to us. And so you were kind enough to answer many of the questions and the concerns during that meeting as well. Um, but for me, especially being on the legislative committee for the city of Bellevue with, with Dan and the mayor, um, TIF is an important tool that is utilized in Nebraska, one of the few economic development tools that we have. Uh, but because of requests for smaller parcels like this that don't necessarily meet the guidelines, that's one of the reasons that's under the microscope right now and why we're constantly fighting to keep this important tool in the legislature. The one thing that I was always taught with TIF and I'm guessing that former state senator Don Preister can probably build on this better than I. Will the same kind of private investment occur here without the incentive? And if you simplify it, which it really can be simplified to that, unfortunately, I don't feel confident in any fashion that this meets the criteria and it isn't because I don't support this development it isn't because I don't support you as a business professional it's because I have to follow the guidelines through state statute and we can nickel and dime the state statute but the bottom line is that this does fail the but for test I'd like to respond to that it does not fail the but for test because the lender is requiring it in this case so it does not go forward the lender can request it. They can't require you to have TIF. They can maybe say that we won't give you a loan unless you get TIF, but that has nothing to do with this body. It has to do with your but-for test. If I can't get a loan because I don't get TIF, then this project doesn't move forward. So but for this request, you don't get this redevelopment in your community. Right, and we can't give TIF to, to, to projects that don't meet the criteria. But we do meet the criteria. There's, there's probably I, 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 I no project you've ever approved that, that's more directly 
what the legislature wanted TIF used for. so that it's not hurting the businesses and the valuation of the properties in the area. I, I, I respectfully disagree and, okay. and won't argue back and forth with you. I should say, said my piece and that's where I stand and our votes will tell how everybody stands. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. Mr. Sullivan. I, I'm looking at what's in our packet and my, I guess my question is what's in the packet? Are you saying it is Inform new information as opposed to what was provided to the Planning Commission? Some of it, yes. Okay, and then, um, and then are you saying like the red lines that's in that packet is new in information? Yes. Okay, all right. And then, and then what you've just provided to me is what you would have as responses to those, is that correct? Yes, sir. Correct? Okay. My only comment on this is I haven't had a chance to look at this um, and I would probably like to visit with planning department uh, on it prior to that, but it's your call what you'd like to do on proceeding with it. Mr. Shuchuk. I, I think the only additional comment that was Uh, he, this, this area was annexed in 1983, so it's not been in the city for 45 years, which is a statement he made. Okay, but in other words, everything else that we've had is information that was already provided at the Planning Commission level? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Suchuk. I still have it open for public hearing. Are there others who would like to speak on this item? See none, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Carmichael. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2016-10. I'll second. Second by Mr. Hansen. Any discussion? Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Shuchuk, I have read the Planning Commission report and I saw every one of them that were present voted to deny. Uh, I read some of the information about at least two of the major criteria not being met. Can you expand uh, upon that? Can you give me any additional information? ...of blighted and substandard. Um, you know, if you read through the information I provided in the packet. Um, it was just our opinion that this does not meet the criteria um, required by state statute. Um, specifically, yeah, um, as, as blighted where um, requirements or current conditions conducive to ill health, transmission of disease, infant mortality, juvenile delinquency, and crime, which cannot be remedied through construction prisons, and is, detriment and is detrimental to the public health, safety, morals, or welfare. There is nothing in this application that I feel meets that criteria. Um, the, the definition of blighted also refers to um, a substantial, the presence of a substantial number of deteriorated or deteriorating structures. Ability, again, and is detrimental to the public health, safety, morals, or welfare in its present condition as use. Um, Mr. Shannon, I think, provides a description of his property and the condition of it, but as far as meeting the, the statutory criteria, um, I didn't believe he met that with what he submitted, and obviously the Planning Commission did not um, believe he met that criteria either. 
and the additional information I submitted addressed each of those points and proved that we had met those requirements. Thank you, Mr. Shuchuk. Councilman Blood. Hey, Mr. Shannon, I would ask why you submitted that to only half the council if it was so important. That was with the only three emails I had. Our public information is on the city website. Well, working on a Saturday remotely, I only had three with me, so I got it out as best I could. I apologize. We have a motion and a second. I think we're done with discussion. Let's call the vote, please. And Mr. Shannon, I was at the uh, planning meeting as well, and um, they did recommend that you come back as an area rather than just the sole business. So I know that has been a discussion with that area. So hope to see you back. Thank you. Item 11, resolution. Resolution number 2016-08, amending the master fee schedule to reflect increase the sewer connection fees. Do we have, there you are. Bless you. Hello. Um, thanks for holding this over. It was a, a kind of pleasant surprise. It gave us a little bit of uh, opportunity to think about some of the comments that were made about different subject matters and uh, making things affordable and trying to do things incrementally. Um, and so we took that information and we developed an incremental plan um, that would take these sewer connection fees and apply them on an, an annual increase to kind of meet the need. Um, we Any questions at this point? From my understanding, there's a resolution um, that takes care of the first increase in my memo. We talk about additional increases and an ordinance and seeing that in an ordinance is being worked on by uh, Mr. Sullivan and his team. So I'm here for any questions. Are there any questions from the council? See none. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Mr. Cook. I'm not quite following you on this. We had talked about maybe presenting it as an ordinance with incremental increases. And what you're telling us today is it's a resolution and Mr. Sullivan is working on something. I'm not quite sure how we're moving. Forward. Yeah, uh, I think that maybe I can get a little help from clerks here too, but I think the first the first step is to go ahead and get the initial increase done via resolution because I think that's how it's been done historically. And then as we work on the verbiage um, from, from Pat to help us get that into an ordinance fashion. So that's, that's the plan forward at this point. So what I... Because I don't know that there's a process for actually putting an incremental increase in the actual resolution for the master fees. resolution should be updated to reflect the first increase is that wow. should be in the packet I only the only thing I had attached was here this mr. is it on the cover mr. Roberts the first increase we want to do by resolution to get it enacted immediately the next we're then over the period of the next three years, we're going to do it incrementally, and we're probably going to use an ordinance form to do this, so each year just automatically then will increase. After the fourth year, then we're going to revisit the ordinance again and look at how we can do this uh, more on a consistent basis so that we're not waiting several years and then do a huge increase, but we're going to do smaller increments through several years. Uh, but the first one that you're voting on tonight is just the resolution to approve the first increment of the increases, and then the next three will be over the next three years. And I think the packet so. should have included the updates to the master fee, right? So the first? So it is 900.
and that should be in the packet. Silver. I got it. So help me out for a minute, because now I'm at, I'm at a loss as well. It, it, what you're asking for now is the master fee schedule to be changed for 2016, single 900, duplex 1600. Yes. Four units, 2800. It's actually a per unit. 700 it's, per unit. It's in her. Okay. Four unit or larger, $700 per unit. No, it, per unit is just a flat fee per unit. That's just an example that, that you're is looking an example. at for a fourplex. I got it. What you're talking is multifamily then. Right. $700 per unit. And commercial, 3900 Right. Okay. And is that different than what was proposed in the master fee schedule yes. two weeks ago? Yes. Okay. It's different. All right. So, first of all, if you want to pass this, we would make a motion to approve a change in the master fee schedule and then make an amendment to take these new changes that you're requesting. master fee schedule um, and we're almost reverting back to where we're putting fees into the ordinance instead of what we had done where we had tried to eliminate that and just have a master fee schedule for everything so I think we would be better off if annually, just annually if coming back bring those increases and those get reviewed anyway uh, at that time if that would be easier then I'm fine with that okay mr. Carmichael I'm as confused as everybody because um, we're fundamentally changing how we accrue or calculate this sewer connection fee. It's established by the ordinance, and now we're going to come back every year and apply a percentage increase. No. It, 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 let me see if I can... If I have this correct, the ordinance has fees in which it applies, and we're using the same... Uh, reference to single duplex multifamily and commercial as what's in the ordinance everything that we do by ordinance now that has a fee goes on the master fee schedule and we uh, develop that in 2017 and request a change in the master fee schedule or 2018 or 2019 um, and otherwise if we go back to changing it that it automatically increases in the ordinance the way with our system is now set up I would still have to make a resolution <coughs> to change it on the master fee schedule each year correct I believe that's true so I think the easier route and it also gives you an opportunity to look at it each year is that they just bring it back to you annually for review and decide whether an increase is warranted. Well, then now you have the master plan. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the motion would need to be an amended or it as... first would be a motion to accept as it was previously presented at, uh, in the packet. And then secondly would be in a motion to amend to change to these numbers that have been given to us. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Epiphany, on, on the, what you gave us, the proposed changes, it says on Is it, the numbers are the same, the percent change was a little off. Say it again now. The, so that memo that I gave you showed the formulatic change for, for your purposes, just so you could see the incremental percent change between the two on an annual basis. The original formula was off. That doesn't have anything to do with the actual fee itself, just the, showing you the cha percent change. So that memo that I gave you is the actual percent change. Does that answer your question? I don't think so, because I'm completely confused. I, I guess from our meeting, I thought we were going to, present more of an incremental that's exactly what we're doing deny vote down what was originally proposed and right bring something new here that's exactly what I'm doing I, I guess I 
let me finish my question. Okay. This multi-unit is based on a fourplex, and it's a 5%, 5 percent, 5.5 percent increase. Before it was 1,900 for the first three units, and then 450 for each additional. So, I guess what would the numbers be if someone built a 200 apartment multi complex? What would it be? What would the charges be today, and what will they be? number and create a scenario for the multiplex. I guess just running this through my mind, I'm not going to have good numbers, but a fourplex would probably have, have been, let me see this, I, I can't, I, it's, <laughs> I think it should be right there on the memo. I, I, I'm missing something. Okay. Well, I, Mr. Got, I, had it. I just got handed okay. this. Mr. Roberts. Okay, if you look, do you guys, you have this sheet here? That's the one that yes. Epiphany yes. gave earlier. Okay, if you look at the four units, the uh, hookup fees for four units today <laughs> would be $2,350 based on the formula. If you look at Twenty three fifty is a nineteen point one five percent increase. That's for the first year. The second year that will be thirty two hundred, which is a fourteen point three percent increase. The fourth year thirty six hundred, which would be an eleven point oh, I'm sorry, I'm off one, eleven point one one percent increase. So in the fourth year we'll be up to the thirty six hundred dollars. Well, uh, let's go back. We'll be from seven hundred to what was the final number? So 900. 900. 900. So we go from the 1900 slash 450 to 900 by the end of the fourth year, which was what was presented two weeks ago, the $900. So we did it incrementally over four years as opposed to doing it all in one year. So that's just an example of a fourplex. That's not... Mr. Preister? Just clarification. It, it isn't that complicated, but it can seem to be. What you've done is broken it down into separate years so that rather than doing the complete total amount of an increase, you're simply breaking it into Next year, you're going to come back come and back you're going to again. ask us to do it again because currently our fees have gotten way behind right. and those fees are not paying. And in this last accounting that we just did where we were audited and went through the audit, we see that those fees we're collecting for sewers are not paying the expenses. And if they keep going, we're not going to be able to bond when we have serious problems and when we yep. get half million, a million dollar kind of fix, and we have to do it in the middle of winter when we can't get a contractor and we're held hostage to paying whatever they charge us because we've got to do it immediately or people are going to have sewer sludge backing up into their basement and we're going to get the calls and none of us are going to be happy. You're trying to plan, be thinking of the future, begin to pay for what it's currently costing us, and maybe, just maybe, Council to be very clear as to what we're talking about. I, I'm going to support a one-year increase. Um, 
I've heard a lot of people talk in this, in this chamber about Bellevue being open for business. Open for business. Come on down. Let's go build in Bellevue. And the fact remains is you have just seen two very static ordinances that are going to raise the fees on developers tremendously in this community. And I mean tremendously. If you look at the fifth year going out based on $700 for multifamily for a 200 unit complex, the difference is going to be over $60,000 for that. The arterial street program is going to add a huge fee on top of everything else. So what we're doing here now is we're saying, and, and the comments that I got were, everybody else is charging this. Everybody else is charging this in Sarpy County. Well, that's fine, but if we're open for business, explained herself very well to me in the meeting with respect to the ability to bond the debt. We can't do that because we're running a deficit in, in our sewer maintenance or our sewer fund. So we have to address that. And I've, I've asked the city administrator and the city attorney today some pretty straightforward questions on this that um, I may not get an answer for tonight, but I'm going to get an answer for them with respect to that fund and, and can we augment money in there so that we can bond this debt. Uh, it'll take us a long time to overcome that, that financial deficit based on, on these numbers. So from Steve Carmichael, Ward 1 perspective, I will support a one-year increase of these fees, but I don't know that I'm going to support all this because I see what it's going to do to the development community. Councilman Blood. I, I never announce how I'm going to vote because that's against Robert's rules, but I will say that um, I to a community like Bellevue, this is something that they anticipate. They know that um, the infrastructure for sewers in, in this part of the state is antiquated, and we're trying to play catch up with our budget. We're also beholden to taxpayers, and one of the things we have to do is be good stewards of their money. If we're not amending our master fee schedule in a way that is prudent and forward thinking, if we're always nickel and diming and nitpicking, then are we being good stewards of taxpayer money? So I think those are questions we need to think about. Sometimes I, I, think, it's, I think it's excellent that council people are aware of what's going on, have comments, have questions, um, but we want to make sure that we're not micromanaging staff that is highly qualified and knows what they're doing as well. Um, we're the uh, legislative body. We're not the staff. And I feel you've done a very good job on this. I think you've been very patient. Um. And as far as developers go, this is something they're going to experience in pretty much every community in this part of the state. And what we're asking is not inflated or bloated. So I just want to put it in perspective from the other side that this isn't anything new for developers. And I think we're implementing so many really positive things. And I know both the mayor and the city administrator and I, I'm sure others, have heard a lot of really good things from developers in the last six months. Um, I think we're moving in a good direction. And we want to be careful what negatives we put out. Mr. Berlowitz. Yeah, I'll just interject. Um, a wastewater um, operation like water, like electric, those are called enterprise funds. Enterprise funds are um, to be self-sustaining in terms of generating revenues to cover not only O&M, 
operation and maintenance, but also to, uh, to build up necessary funds, as Councilmember Pricer indicated, for emergency repairs, but also we can't grow either. So that's something you need to be aware of. It's much better to raise rates, because I've been in the utility business before I was here for a long time, and I can tell you it's more palatable to do it incrementally than to wait for an extended period of time when you, it appears that you have, you're making a major increase. That's when people really get upset, and they'll say, well, if you knew you were gonna have to do this, why didn't you raise it a little bit over a period of time? Why, why'd you wait so long? very first city I was in, they hadn't raised water rates in 10 years. We had to do a 300% increase to get the water fund back to where it was making enough revenue to cover those things. And I guarantee you, the public is not happy when they see that. So I think what's being proposed is rather than taking a big gulp all at once, do it incrementally. Uh, we may have to do it every year, but you really have to look at it. And granted, we don't want to price ourselves out of the market to be competitive. But I guarantee you, every other city in the state of Nebraska and Iowa that we compete with and Missouri, et cetera, they're dealing with the same issues, and, and they operate their utilities in the same way. Uh, you don't want to be supporting your utility out of your general fund. You revenue wise to cover all those things mr. cook thank you mayor I and I you know what what council member uh, blood and price are saying I agree with you we, we've got to move this forward but when I asked for this continuance was to meet with epiphany and we met with the idea that I didn't feel that the proposed raise was appropriate because it was so huge and the goal was to make it incremental and that's what we're doing here the confusion was, I did not, when I look at this and I look at something like this, I did not catch what was being trying, what they were trying to do. Because there was conversation on a route that we would get to. These numbers, some of these percentages are different than what we were given a little bit ago. So the confusion wasn't that we need to, we met with Epiphany and Mr. Roberts and they showed us about a 100,000 deficit in this uh, department for this year. We need to cover those things. We know there needs to be a raise. We're not questioning that. We're questioning It's no, nobody here had a bad intent. Would, would you like that in a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carmichael. Thank you. Um, I will put it in the form of a motion, thank but you. I do want to thank you, Epiphany, because you did exactly what we asked you to do. And, I, I, and you too, Jeff. I really do appreciate you coming back with this documentation for us to do this. Um, I don't want to be a negative Nelly, but um, I have to look out for how this town develops over the next 20 years, and I think accumulations of, of fees that occur in cities are well and good when you have when you have to do business and that's sewers or water or buildings or, or staff or whatever um, so I appreciate what you did and that being said I will you have to help me here Pat All right. so what I'd like to have is a motion to amend the master fee schedule as originally presented I'd like There's to make a motion to amend the master fee schedule as originally presented. Second. Second by Mr. Fee schedule, we have uh, increased the rates. For single family dwelling, including includes ma manufactured, modular, and mobile homes. 
Sure. And that will be from 800 to 900. For duplexes, it's currently 1600. That will remain the same. For multifamily, it was 1900 for the first three units, 450 for each additional unit. That will be raised to 700, thank you, for 700 per unit. And for the commercial, it's for the commercial industrial, it's, it's 3,500, and that's going to be raised to, help me out. 3,900. 3,900 an acre. Is that minimum still in here? Minimum of 1750 based on the building footprint. Second. I do want to amend the amended. All right, go ahead. I want to amend the amended to include the entire schedule to 2019. Ah, so. I'll need a second, Mr. Second. Mr. Preister. Just for clarity, you're seeing the vision and you're saying let's go ahead and do it incrementally. You're saying let's do it all today. Let's bite the bullet. Let's make sure that the funds are solid. Let's make sure if we get the emergencies, we can bond. Let's make sure we put it all together and we do this because we're going to have to do firefighters. We're going to have to do police. This isn't the only thing we have, but this is out of the fund that goes directly back into the fund. And so you're simply saying, let's get something off the plate so we can do all the bigger stuff we got coming. And put it out on the line for the developers so they know as they, they grow in the future what to expect. And that these aren't out of line with what they're paying everywhere else. Actually, they're substantially lower than what they're paying everywhere else. Works and Epiphany from Wastewater were asked to do. Is that what you have, Sabrina? I'll just have to figure out how it needs to look on here. Sure. We, we can get we that worked right. out, uh, uh, but w based off of the sheet that was presented to us today, Sabrina. Well, I don't know that I have that, but okay. Wait. Let's make sure she has it first. Per, Mayor, just perhaps to clarify that uh, for the public, since the public doesn't have those sheets, I'll just go through these quickly. Sure. Based on those same numbers, uh, the, the 2017, the single would go from 900 to 1,020. Duplexes would go would stay at 1,600 again. Uh, unit uh, multifamilies would jump to uh, from 2,800 to 3,200. And commercial would jump from 3,900. Duplex is 1,600 again, staying the same. And multi-units per unit would be a thousand and commercial would be 4200 did you follow that Sabrina uh, we'll give you the sheet but okay. got it now and it, I'll, I'll just mention that we we certainly can do that if the council chooses to do so um, include each year on our master fee schedule so we have Second, so now open for discussion, Mr. Hansen. Thank you. Um, you know, I okay, we get we got the original motion, and we have the, the first amendment, amendment, and then the second amendment. amendment. Sounds pretty good. Second, I like the second it, amendment. Anyway, um, I would have to say that I, you know, I'd be opposed to arbitrarily making increases over all the way through two, 2019 without looking at each year to kind of see where we are. 
I mean, I don't know how it is with a developer, but you come in and you say, we're just start in increasing all the way along. I do believe that, as Mr. Brillowitz said, by 19%, 14%, 12%, 11% on some of these all the way across the board through 2019. That's it. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. And I just want to make sure that, I don't know if I made this in my motion, but that was good for the one year 2016. Is that right, Epiphany? Okay, and Epiphany and Mr. Um, Roberts, thank you for meeting and providing that information for me. Ms. Councilman Blood. I'm sorry, but the word arbitrarily is just stuck in my head. I, I don't think anything about this is, arbitrar is arbitrary. I think there is science behind it and math behind it. And there is nothing that says that we can't revisit it once we approve it. I, as I, developers can see then what our intentions are as we move forward. And if we do find out that we're in a big boom and we want to raise rates or we're in a, in a bad area and we need to do something about the rates, that's something we can also revisit as opposed to creating more work for staff and constantly bringing this forward and you'll have different council people and um, you know I think sometimes and I know you didn't mean to be offensive to any of the staff or anything but I believe that there's math behind it I believe there's science behind it and we talk about long-range planning and we do we have so much going on with police and fire and other attributes of the budget this is one very small piece that we can just get off our plates if we have concerns about it there's nothing that precludes us from revisiting this in the future as we have many other things that we've passed with that has been moved forward from the past um, I, I don't know why we ask for incremental um, pricing if we're not going to honor it um, just Mr. Real quickly. You know, maybe I misused the word arbitrary. I'm just saying it, that when you look at it and you're automatically going to make an increase every year all the way through 2019, I don't think it's a major thing to have them come back and say, here's what our sewer use fee is now. We'll maybe follow that fee schedule and have the council vote on it. Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I don't think any of us wants to raise fees on people but we also are faced with having to pay for the infrastructure. All of these fees were going to be raised or proposed to be raised right to The we get behind, the longer we delay in raising fees, the farther we get into debt, the less we can, and I don't even like bonding. I mean, my mom taught me, you buy something, you pay for it, or you don't buy it. You don't go into debt, you pay yourself first. And I've lived that motto, and I like living it with government, because I don't want to spend the taxpayer's money on interest. I want to put a little aside, just like I do in my savings account, and wait until I got the money. I want to manage and budget well. I want us not to go out at night when people have sewers backing up into their homes because we couldn't bond even if we wanted, and we have to pay those exceedingly high prices. I want us to have a little cushion. I want what our wastewater is starting to do, a complete assessment, we know the condition, that condition then we plan for, just exactly as Public Works does with a one and six year plan. I've heard from people whose sewers backed up. Those are not some very happy people, and I would not want to be in their position. This increase gives predictability to the developers. They get the same amount, but it delays it for 
three years, we get to the same end result. We get the increase that at least gets us partway to paying for itself. It just makes sense to me. I'm one vote, and that's how I see it. Mr. Berlowitz. The one thing I would interject, um, especially in regard to having the council ability to revisit uh, whatever you do tonight, a year from now we'll be presenting another biennial budget. So we will be going through another two-year budget process. During that time, we obviously assess all the departments and operations as well as uh, what our revenue sources are. Uh, as well as a capital improvement plan that then goes along with that. So uh, there definitely will be an opportunity even a year from now. with the original numbers that were presented to you. <clears throat> There's been an amendment by Mr. Carmichael to adopt just for the 2016, actually it was a motion by uh, Mr. Cook to pick up the 2016 schedule as presented today. Now there's been a motion to amend your amendment to not only include the 2016, but to also include in the uh, schedule the 2017 2018 and 2019 schedule as proposed so all you're vo voting now is the motion to amend the amendment <clears throat> Sabrina you got that so yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> please vote vote is three to three I vote yes Motion passes. So now you're voting whether you're going to approve amending the original motion, including all four years, because the four years was just passed. Then I want to recall my vote. I voted. I misunderstood. Well, I want to. It's not over yet. You can vote differently. You can vote, vote now. <laughs> okay. When you rattled off one, two, or three, I thought we were voting on one. You're voting on all four years. I was not aware of that. All right. Then you can make a motion to reconsider. Well, we've, we've, we've got the motion now. All he has to do is vote it down. Mm -hmm. He votes, votes I, let me back up. Sabrina, did Mr. Cook vote yes on that last motion? Yes. Okay. So you have the right to... Uh, we've, we've had it in to the past reconsider. where someone voted. You have a right to reconsider and make a motion to reconsider the vote. I'd like to make a motion to reconsider the vote. Second. All right. So now you're making a motion to reconsider. Does it? Which means... Well, does it... Well, Carol, I... Go ahead. It was five to one. Okay. Now the motion on the floor to take care of all four years is on the floor. A vote yes would amend it to cover all four years. A vote no would kill that motion to amend. Please vote. Vote is four to two. All right, that amendment is denied. Now you have a motion to amend with just the one year of 2016. Waiting for Sabrina to get caught sure. Up. <laughs> you ready? Please vote. Vote is five to one. Motion carries. All right. Now you have a motion on the original motion as amended, including the one year. You ready, Sabrina? 
<laughs> Please vote. Authority Foundation for 9th Street Phase 1 clearance for the amount of 44250 until August 1st, 2016. Councilman Blood. Motion to approve in the amount of 44250 until August 1st, 2016. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Any discussion? See none. Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. 12E, request for approval to apply for and accept, if awarded, the SAFER grant for 12 new firefighters. Councilman Blood? Yes, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion that we open this up for public comment since it has been uh, made clear by uh, the public in our recent surveys that uh, expanding the uh, fire department is a priority for this community. Second. Second by Mr. Modry. Any discussion? See none. Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. I'll open up for public hearing on this item. Anyone wish you to speak on this item, please do so at this time. Hello, I'm Don Gifford. Uh, live at 10111 South 11th in Bellevue. I represent the uh, fire union for the full time firefighters in Bellevue. Oh, I'm breaking things. All right, well, I'm Don Gifford. I'm the full time union president for the full time firefighters who live in Bellevue. Uh, I think it's imperative that you guys uh, approve this tonight that we can apply for this grant, and if we get it, we can hire the 12 firefighters. We've made a commitment to uh, go the full-time route. We need to carry on that commitment tonight by showing the uh, grant people that you are committed to moving this fire department forward with this vote tonight. I appreciate your support in this. I'm sure the community will also. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gifford. I kind of by FEMA for two years. There's no obligation after that. Um, there is no matching funds. So if you're, but it really actually extends to three years, and let me explain that. It, we've already budgeted 420000 for the two years. If we were to get the, the grant, that means there's 420000 that we wouldn't be paying because FEMA would be paying the full amount. So when you take that 420000 for two years, add it up, it's, it's uh, uh 420, what is that, 840? The difference is 96,000. So if we were to get the grant, the third year increase in cost of what we're currently budgeted would be 96,000. The fourth year is when the full weight of that grant, um, minus what we would normally budget, which would be 528,000. So that's budget of the amount of money that we would get in the grant is that offset somehow by the part-time firefighters that would not be there yes that's the that that is the Nine. the 432,000 per year that I'm talking about okay. all right so that's what we allocate for those positions all right mr. cook Mary, we talked briefly one thing that was unusual in this emotion was accept if awarded and you explained that to me and it made sense it sounds like now 
they want a commitment from the city before they go. You better explain it. Yeah, I read this out in the hallway um, to a couple of the councilmen, and I'll read it again. In order to ensure that there is a clear understanding of the long-term obligations of a safer grant and that if awarded, all parties involved are committed to fulfill those requirements upon acceptance of the award, we are requesting a letter from your governing body stating their commitment of the above requirements. And, and what that comes down to is that we're doing that at the front end, if I understood you right, was that it used to be we would apply, then if we told, were told that we got it, then we'd come back to the council and they would give the thumbs up or thumbs down. But now they want it at the front end. It talks about the above requirements. It doesn't specifically say that you can't accept the award. It says that during that award period that the staffing levels, you will incur no layoffs during the period of performance of the grant. So what you're saying is you're not going to offset and lay off people and, and get the grant money and say, you know, hire 12, lay off 12, and really there's no increase, and now you've got money. Um, however, Chief Jibaliska, and I'll let you talk because he's actually had conversations and what happens uh, and what has happened is that the uh, FEMA, my understanding is that, you know, they allocate so much money for, for funds for this type of an award, for uh, this type of a grant throughout the country. And that uh, as they get towards the end and the way they disperse it is throughout the year. So it's not just right up front like on uh, March 3rd or, or April 3rd that all the money comes out and all the awards come out. They read these throughout the year. So you may not get an award if you're if you're the winner or the recipient until uh, the last month of Verbally, that's the conversation Chief Jibalisco's had. This one here specifically says that you're going to commit to the terms of the acceptance of that, and that is that there will be no layoffs during that period. Councilman Blood. Is that accurate, Chief Jibalisco? We have one question for you, Chief. Councilman Blood. I went to the FEMA site and read through all the Safer Grant information, and one of the things that I don't think has been noted is that the deadline to get this done is Friday, March 25th. Is that correct? Uh, Chief Jibalisco is working on a grant. That That's the drop dead date for us to have everything turned in. Right. The grant opened up on February 22nd. Mr. Sullivan. Aren't we, in fact, doing a reduction by reducing the, the part timers by bringing in these full timers? Are we not? I'm asking you, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm asking you, are we not creating a problem by hiring 12 and then laying off part timers as opposed to full timers? Well, we're actually solving a problem, and that is, is being able to keep enough people. Talked about the issues that are at hand with the part-time model, and that it's a transitional model. Is that we don't, we, on a daily basis, we really can't control who's going to show up and who's not going to show up. So you do reduce those part-time positions and fill them with full-time positions, but you're guaranteeing that you're going to have a response and that the stations will be open. Is I'm that not, what you're asking? I'm not disputing that. My concern is, is under the SAFER grant, you can't hire 12 people. Let me make it black and white and then we'll go to gray. Full-time. We, we can't hire 12 and then lay off 12, in a sense. Okay. Full-time. Uh, or displace what we're paying 12 by paying it under the SAFER grant. Now, my question is, under the SAFER grant, is there a problem that we are going to reduce hours or eliminate some of the part-time employees? Would that be a violation of no, that? No, because the employees are actually filling full-time equivalent positions. We're not reducing how many positions we're running a day. You know, you know, no, I'm not following you because... So if you're staffing levels, you're not reducing staffing levels, okay? So... Yeah. 
with 12 safer grant people, I'm not reducing that either. We're still I, running I, 22 I want, people. We're still running 22 people a day. Right, and that's what I'm saying. The safer grant saying this is to add people, not keep it the same. We're not laying off anybody. Even the part-time, we're reducing how many shifts they work, thereby making them more available, but we're not laying off anybody. We're not laying off full-time people or full-time equivalent positions. We're not reducing the amount of staffing I'm not, levels. I know you're not laying off any full-time positions. I, I'm completely clear on that. When, my, when, my, when my we opinion. apply for the grant, if this will help you, this is all explained. Our model is explained in that process. So I don't know that there's any issue at all of what you're, what you're referring to. I don't know if there is either, but I, I'm struggling with the idea that if we're going to save 430000 on part-timers. Joe Jabalisco, uh, 211 West 22nd Ave, Bellevue Fire Department Battalion Chief. No, what we're doing is you just you apply for the grant, so you're applying for a full-time firefighter positions, and there's they, so you can't lay off any personnel. If there's going to be a reduction of hours of part-timers, it's not even noted. It's not even a cause. It's not even something that they will look at ever. Uh, what they're looking at is if you took the grant and then you turn around and laid people off, full-time firefighters in a year, then you're going to have a problem. But there, there's nothing. And I've, I've talked to, to FEMA, I've talked to, you know, people there, and uh, the part of, th that, that's the whole part, and I put it in the grant, that we're trying to reduce our, our, our dependency on part-timers for, for this reason. No, I, I totally get that, and, but assuming we're functioning at full speed now with the part-timers, Timers told me today that over half of our department who were part timers were down there taking that test. Is that we're going to lose people through attrition by resigning anyway? We're losing 20 to 25 percent a year, and if we have 100 part timers, we could be losing 15 to 20 per year. So even by attrition, by by them leaving on their own accord, you know we're not going to be laying anybody off. In fact, if you looked at our schedule right now, people can pick up as many hours as they want. And they can, they can work all the time because that's how short we are on our schedule. So it would be hard-pressed for someone to come back and say, uh, I, I wasn't able to work any more hours. They could be working all they want. Mr. Peister. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would just add when you say uh, making the assumption that we have all positions filled from the reports we've gotten, all positions haven't been filled, and there have been some outages. So we're not filling all positions. The estimate was very optimistic that we would. Time people, so there is no guesswork. So we're helping to make the transition. So we're going from volunteer to paid part time and the ultimate goal paid full time and that's what this grant is a, able to be able to do and it's even better yet because I salute the fire department for writing the grant and getting the first safer grant but that one was dependent on keeping all of those firefighters and we had a commitment at the end far greater than this commitment so this is a more flexible grant in my view and I don't either see the conflict with part-time people Councilman Blood. And for those of us that reviewed the FEMA site, um, this may be one of our last opportunities to get a safer grant because this is the end of President Obama's um, budget, and there's no guarantee that the safer program will go on. One of the greatest 
um, one, one of the things that I regret the most from being on the council in 2008, 2009, um, was when very few of us, me being one of them, supported the safer grant for the police and it was denied by the rest of the council. I look at how stretched our police department is right now. And had we been more forward thinking, I don't know why I say we because I voted in favor of it, but um, the police department would be in a different position right now. We sat here and talked about how important it was that we move forward to find funding for the fire department. Some people felt passionate about reducing the salaries for the council. Um, and one of the less comments I made during that conversation was that I hope people are as passionate moving forward at finding creative funding for the fire department as we try to figure out how to make this happen in our budget. This is something that is manna from heaven. We aren't going to get a lot of opportunities to support our fire department in a way that's not coming out of taxpayer of the taxpayers' pockets. This gives Rich plenty of time to figure out with the council who has made that commitment to figure out how to generate these funds, how it's gonna pay, be paid for in three years. We're not asking you to, to figure it out in the next two months, in the next six months, in the next year. It gives us time to plan, but this shows us that we're gonna put our money where our mouth is, that if we're really verbalizing how important this commitment is and we're not just doing it to pander because some people are, are trying to get elected or reelected or are trying to show the community they're good guys or girls, um, this is the opportunity. Mr. Motri. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm just trying to understand the numbers a little bit. Uh, you said 960 a year would be offset by 420 or 432 a year. Is that the total budget we have for part-timers? No, for those positions, for those full-time equivalent positions, that's the cost of those positions that we budget for. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carmichael. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Carol's 100% correct on this. We, we have a very difficult decision that we're gonna have to make in the next two to three years with respect to paying for a fire department that this community sorely needs. Um, this, is a, this is an opportunity, I, I disagree, Carol, I think that this is taxpayer money, it's why we're $19 trillion in debt, but um, the, the fact remains is that we have an opportunity to get money to pay for firemen for two years and figure out how we're gonna fund this, this department. And I support that, and I think this is a, uh, this is a unique period in the city of Bellevue right now where we have an opportunity to move forward and resolve a problem that is hugely hanging over our heads. Would you care to put that in a motion? I would. I would make a motion. <laughs> well, you haven't closed the public hearing. Oh, sorry. Um, Chief, do you have other? I don't have anything. I still have it open for public hearing. Anyone wishing to? Uh, Chuck Frederick, 1511 Madison Street. I agree. That I think the if we can get that money from FEMA and get for two years, that's great. I'm a little. Mr. Mudry asked a question about that $450,000. I thought at one time it was said that that was for part-time people, and if that's the case, that then it really wouldn't be. A situation for saving for three years, we would we would be okay for two years. But the third year, we would still have we'd still have to face the bullet and get some money. So I'm I'm again I'm a little confused about that four hundred sixty thousand dollars. It was you asked the question, Mr. Mudry, and I, and it made it sound like it was full time people for that amount. But then I heard up here before it was like for part time people. So. Uh, I, I think we should just be clear whether it's for two or three years it will be getting will be getting will be okay but I think it sounds like it's only two years for me thank you two years <clears throat> yeah what I said is the difference in cost of what we currently budget so if we're already budgeting four hundred and twenty thousand dollars for those positions then we wouldn't be using four hundred and twenty thousand that is currently in the budget 
nor would we use it the second year. And the third year, one-third of that, that 432, it's still in there. So when you look at what the increase in cost, when does it hit us, it hits us 96000 the third year, and the full weight of that, minus what we currently have budgeted, is 500 and some thousand. Thank you, Chief. Leanne Gifford, 10111 South 11th Street in Bellevue. You guys have heard me up here plenty of times before telling you I want a full-time, full-paid fire department. And you've been putting it in your strategic plan that you need to do something about the fire department. Even in today's packet, if you look at the administrator's report, the fire chief has indicated what days in the past two weeks they closed engines or stations because they didn't have enough staffing. So I think the issue of whether or not they're going to be laying off part-timers, I think that's pretty much a moot point. I think the point of this grant is to get full-time people on board. It's practically free money. I say practically because you're right. It is federal tax dollars, so I paid some for it. But I really don't understand why there's a huge debate over it when, as the chief said, you've really got four years to figure out how to get the funding. And that's plenty of time for you guys to do the publicity you need to explain to the public why you need a restaurant tax. Restaurant tax isn't going to hurt most people. I mean, if you can't afford an extra penny or two on your Big Mac, you shouldn't be eating out. The restaurant tax only hits those who choose to go out to eat. It isn't like increasing the sales tax, which Poor people have to buy clothes and suddenly they have to pay more because of the sales tax. A restaurant tax, in my opinion, is a much better way to fund this. And you also need, I mean, you know, driving around Bellevue, the streets are in deplorable condition. Restaurant tax would also help pay for that. So I really don't understand why there's a big debate over whether or not we should allow the fire department to apply for this grant and agree to accept it if it is offered. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gifford. Are there others that would like to speak on this item? I just have one comment. I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Sullivan. I just want the council and the fire department to not misconstrue me as your adversary. I'm advocating for you, but I have to ask these questions, and I would like an opportunity to look at that grant at some point. Mr. Carmichael. Thank you, Mayor. With that being said, I'd like to make a motion for approval for the Bellevue, or Bellevue Fire Department to apply for and accept, if awarded, the safer grant for 12 new firefighters. Second. Second by Councilman Blood. Any discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 12F, approval to implement a non-emergency, non-suspression volunteer program in the Fire Rescue Department, similar to the Police Viper Program. Councilman Blood. Motion to approve, and I would suggest that the chief go to the Bellevue Public Safety Foundation to request funding to assist with this project. So we have a, we have second. a motion. A second by Mr. Carmichael. Any discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 12, current business. 12G, approval of, of the amended extend the U.S. cellular phone contract, an additional two years. Councilman Blood. Motion to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Any discussion? Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. 12H, approval of extension of custom farming contract. H1, approval of sixth extension to the contract with Justin Toms for custom farming approximately 70 acres at 36th and K part in the amount not to exceed $11,750 to waive council policy for requiring solic solicitation of bids for goods and service costing more than $10,000. Mr. Preister. Which of the uh, motion should I do first to suspend the rules or do it all in one, Mr. Oh. 
a legal counsel here. So. <laughs> Just to make sure I do you it. You can right. make one motion. Okay, do it. You all. can make one motion to approve and suspend the rules. All right. I thought I could, but I wanted to be sure. I, in my motion, I will move to appro approve but suspend the rules because it is over 10,000. The sixth extension to the contract with Justin Toms for custom farming approximately seven acres at 36 and Cape Art Road in an amount not to exceed $11,750. And I've already waived the council policy for requiring solicitation of bids for goods and services costing more than 10,000. Second. Sabrina, did you get all that? Good. Thank you, we have a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Carmichael. Point of clarification, I think uh, Don misspoke. I think it's 70 acres. And oh, I said 78. Seven. Seven. Oh, I'm sorry. Sabrina, did you get the 70 acres, please? Thank you. 70 it is. Okay, any more discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. 12H2, approval of the sixth extension contract with Just Toms for custom farming approximately 62 acres at the Bellevue Sports Complex in the amount of not to exceed $9,750, Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the sixth extension to the contract with Justin Toms for custom farming approximately 62 acres at the Bellevue Sports Complex in an amount not to exceed $9,750. Second. Second by Councilman Blood. Any discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. 12 I, amending the council policy resolution number 16 and 17. Mr. Mr. Berlowitz. I'll jump in and then Paul can jump in. Uh, back on November, uh, November, <laughs> get my numbers messed up. Back on February 8th, uh, I submitted a proposed uh, po a revision for policy 17 and 16 and 17, if I get those correct. Uh, those had to do with uh, 16 would uh, address a uh, task force, uh, what a task force is, how it's formed, um, its purpose, uh, and then uh, 17 addressed standing committees, which uh, replaced one that was on ad hoc, ad hoc committees. Uh, I was not able to attend the February 22nd meeting. The mayor and I were in Lincoln at the League Mid Midwinter Conference. Uh, on February 8th, uh, Council Member Cook uh, asked that it be laid over so he had, would have a chance to uh, propose some changes. Uh, he did submit to me uh, a revised 16 and 17. Uh, subsequently, uh, City Attorney Tim Buckley and I met with Paul. Uh, we went through his uh, proposed policies versus the ones that I originally submitted. His are the ones listed as number two. Uh, and we went through, and, and I guess from, from my position as to what I brought forward, and Council Member Preister can still weigh in, that I would, I would be supportive of what now is listed under number two as policy, uh, Council Policy 16 and 17 that would replace number one, which was, was originally submitted. And Paul, anything you want to add or done? Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. And, and we briefly talked about... Um, you know, maybe a time frame of putting this up on the website so the public would have access to it. And when I saw the first proposal, I, I guess the way I would describe mine is I just feel that it sort of tightened things up when we were going through this process. Uh, I asked Dan to do some research, and I'm not sure who did it, if it was Sabrina or who, but we came up with 27 committees that we currently have. And I don't know if we can narrow that down and one task force that we felt was still active, and that was on the World Baseball Village. Yeah, some so, of those are, are actually by codes, um, right. commissions and boards. Right. Right. Uh, probably the key thing uh, that Paul's referring to, though, it does uh, indicate that a current list will be maintained of task force and what their purpose is, who's on the member, the members are, uh, and on committees, the same thing would apply. It'd be on our both in the city clerk's office and on the website and other, uh, you might say, avenues that we provide information through. Right. And I've had situations where we've made an appointment to a board through the mayor and people were not aware of it. And I just felt 
that on these committees, when people's terms uh, come due, if they're not interested or maybe the decision is not to reappoint them by the mayor, that maybe it would also generate some citizens to beforehand maybe question about it and if interested in it and then submit the necessary paperwork to show that interest. So what I'm trying to do is we got 27, and I, and I agree with Dan, some of them were created by federal law, state law. We did LB 840 recently. That was through a state law. But still, we continue to battle who's serving on these committees. If there's terms, what are their terms? Are they going to seek re-election? If I'm interested in maybe serving, you know, maybe the, on, on, on the uh, website it should say, you know, probably, I hate to say it, Sabrina, but the initial call should probably be to Sabrina if they have some questions about it. Uh, and I think it, this just brings it all together much better than what, uh, you know, I didn't know there was 27 committees out there. I would ask for your support on my proposal, and I think uh, Dan, my discussion was that he would support it also. Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. And, and I can support this. I would just say we have two different approaches. My approach is to be more flexible and to be able to allow counsel on task force, which are uh, short term and they deal with a specific task, to have more flexibility in who's appointed. And you've felt uncomfortable having flexibility. You prefer more structure. There is a trade-off. We keep assigning Sabrina more tasks. We keep asking staff to do more work. We keep getting people to do things, and we expect them to do the job that they're already doing. And yet, we don't want to pay for additional salaries for, or additional staff to do those jobs, but we can keep piling on and asking more work to be done by people. So. I'm not criticizing as much as I'm saying, if we want to cut costs, we need to find either a way to cut other work from people or find a way to allow them to do the additional work somehow, because there's only so many hours in the day. And although this might not be a lot, I know Sabrina has spent a lot of time just searching and going through things that are in ordinance and those ordinance created most of the things that we've gotten. So it is a trade-off. And the I, I uh, Councilmember Price, I did talk to Sabrina briefly, and she said she already had the information on these committees. That was already in her file and kept by her. I think that part of the concern was is that just the general public didn't know. You know, there's a lot of these committees. I don't know who, who, who are members. We recently appointed a member. I think all three members to a committee, a historical committee. I don't know who the members are. I don't know, um, you know, are they meeting? Are they are they doing? I don't. I don't. You know, 27 of them. I didn't. I didn't know all of them until I started looking. So I'm just trying to say it needs to be in Sabrina's hands. Let's put it on the website. And I think anybody, a committee or a task force, I think anybody that's going to go out and do work for the benefit of the city. We should, the six of us, along with the mayor, should have the right to know who's on that committee, what is their goal, what is their intention, when are they going to bring it back, because I think there's, there's some out there that I think very confidently probably have not met for a few years, and then are they necessary? And I think that maybe will whittle some things down, and maybe there'll be some more work on some committees and task force. That's where I was coming from. We have a motion. I'll make a motion. I don't know. I would make a motion that we approve the proposal by myself on uh, number two. Number two. Second. Second by Councilman Blood. Any discussion? See none. Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 12J: Approval of the Fourth Amendment to the Redevelopment Agreement with World Baseball Village. Mr. Mr. Sullivan, do you want to say a few words on this? I can give a little background on it. Um, this amendment, uh, if you recall, uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago, World Baseball Village was struggling uh, their initial projections uh, on what the uh, park was going to provide uh, were not met. 
Uh, we then entered into a management agreement in which they would be extended for only one year um, and with an option as long as they weren't under default to proceed for another year as management. They have exercised that option, um, but they would like to make some improvements to the property. Uh, they would also, uh, in doing so, needed some time to utilize those improvements and requested a five-year extension of their management contract. But they continued to struggle in trying to meet those uh, obligations uh, would not occur. Uh, they would end their relationship uh, come uh, or the end of the 2016 season. Uh, based on projections of what that property would be used for and some other utilities that it's appeared that this would be the best option at least for the next five years. Obviously there were other items that were requested particularly a right to purchase the property or an option to purchase the property and some other things uh, at, at the end. This seemed to be the best utilization of the property that we could use at the time. Uh, World Baseball Village has also offered that um, during the July period that parks and recreation could utilize their fields at no cost to the city uh, to uh, use some of their uh, baseball uh, or use those fields for the uh, recreational programs, perhaps uh, championships or what have you, uh, that would all be handled internally within the city as to whether uh, they actually do that, but that is available to the city. But uh, we're making the best of a, a bad situation, and I think this is the uh, avenue to go, at least for the next five years on this project. What are the wishes of council? Councilman Blood? Motion to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Carmichael. Any discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13, City Administrator's Report. Mr. Berlowitz. Yes, uh, as usual, I or staff or, um, will try to answer any questions. Councilman Blood. Um, I noted that we've received the NDEQ survey, and I was curious when um, the council would be able to see those results. Well, we'll probably bring those up in exec session initially because of the type of results should probably be discussed in exec session at, at that point. But... Uh, it it's 840-page uh, CD that we received the results on, so at any time you want to come up, you're more than welcome. Pat's actually seen that. It's pretty lengthy. I, I think it's important since we're making, yeah. deciding. Yeah. yeah, the intent was to share it since we're discussing redevelopment uh, in executive session. That information really at this point should be presented to you, but in an exec session. And then the second question I have is, um, I didn't understand the statement, the option agreement with Bellevue Future Development LLC with the chamber that Mr. Burks was working on. What, what is that about? Uh, well, I'll let him explain that. Mr. Burks. I had put together an option agreement. It was a template agreement from one of the other uh, options that were given in the county. Uh, I presented it to uh, Mr. Risto to see if uh, the Bellevue Future Development folks would like to engage with the Chamber of Commerce, the Bellevue Chamber of Commerce, and then they would be able to apply for uh, go ready funds or site development funds to get a site shovel ready. Are you referring to beef or a secondary group? The option, the plan was to have the Bellevue Future Development folks option the land to the Bellevue Chamber of Commerce and then the Chamber of Commerce could apply for either LBA $40 or uh, go and, not or, but both LBA $40 and go ready funds to get the site certified shovel ready. Sorry, I'm just, I'm making sure I, I truly understand this. So the uh, option agreement is opening the door for development? Uh, yes, to, yeah, to move planning along for the site to pay for it. <laughs> And if we didn't have this option agreement, how would it be detrimental? Um, part of the, the, the reasoning behind funding these programs, such as the Go Ready funds or even LB840, land control is such a big thing when it comes right. to addressing developer needs. Just, I just wanted to clarify it because it's, sure. just, it's just a sentence on a report right now. Yeah. And if the public were to read it, 
I want them to yeah. know exactly what's And going I might on. add that I, I, in an ideal world, you'd like to be able to have the funds to actually acquire the property in total. But if you can at least get an option on it where you can have that level of control, that gives you, uh, I might say, a um, impetus for serious consideration for funding. And then one last question. Sorry, I know I don't usually have this many questions. Don't matter. Um, I noted on one of the reports about the future bus funding, and with the sil silver, the senior tsunami coming, and our our demographic aging so rapidly in Bellevue, and um, it being a budget, Rich isn't listening, and it being a budget concern that we had to go to community development for for our bus. Um, are we planning for this deficit for when we need to purchase our next bus? Are you listening, Rich? <laughs> no. It has to do with. Um availability or lack of availability of funding for our um, handy bus services going forward due to some of the reduction of funding and the, hurdle, the hoops you have to jump through. And since we had to go to community development as an option for our bus funding, and we know when we look at future demographics in Bellevue, we have the silver tsunami coming. Um, we have to continue to comply with ADA to have transportation for people with disabilities. Um, I just want to make sure that this is on our radar, especially as we move forward to the next strategic planning. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah, I, I can say that the City of Bellevue is continuing to participate in, in meetings that MAPA is holding, as well as, you know, we're participating in the, the county transit study as well. So that's all kind of geared at looking at future needs based upon demographics. Now I think Steve's got a question over oh, there. Mine was not up in the litany. Oh, okay. See no other questions for Mr. Berlowitz. We'll move on to number 14, public request to be heard. Any member of the public address in the council shall abide by council policy resolution 35 regarding the principles of conduct and decorum, which states any statement made during city council meeting by the mayor, members of the city council, city officials and employees, or members of the general public involve personal impertinent or slanderous attacks on individuals regardless of whether the individual so attacks is elected official, city official, or employee, or a member of the general public. And city code section 2-68 regarding the manner of addressing the council. Copies of the aforementioned <coughs> rules are posted outside the council chamber. Speakers shall limit their presentation to five minutes. Good evening, uh, Chuck Frederick, 1511 Madison Street. <coughs> uh, first thing is that uh, I want to again compliment the Parks Department for taking good care of the dog park down at uh, Jewel Park. I take my dog down there quite often, and like today I took her down, and not only did I pick up my dog poo, but I picked up two other dog poos. And I've done that frequently when I'm down there. It might be an idea to maybe put up some signs. You know, I mean, I know the dog people, most of them are trying to be good, but yet uh, if they would walk around, they, the, the park does furnish bags down here, so that's not a problem. So all they have to do is uh, take a bag and pick up, pick up their poo. Uh, the other thing I want to thank Mr. Cook for doing his proposal on the committees. I asked for that list of committees for about a month and a half. I couldn't get any results for a long time until Mr. Carmichael helped me out, and that wasn't a really a really uh, complete list. Uh, I think that uh, being on the website, knowing what they're, who they are, what, what, what their mission is, what, what they're supposed to be doing, and when they meet would be a good idea. The other thing I'm going to ask for, and it shouldn't be very difficult to get, but I'd like to see uh, the studies that were made the last eight years that we paid money for. I'm not a big study person, and a lot of these times I, I, we spend money on studies and then nothing ever happens. And I, th I think it should be good for all of you and myself and all the public to know what studies there have been, how much we paid for them, and also what the results have been. It just would make sense to see where we, where we are in studies. Now I'm gonna give you a, a little story that uh, I've got a used car. It's really old and I'm gonna give it to the city. I'm gonna give you $500 to fix it up. And you got two choices, either fix it up or get rid of it 
and buy a brand new car. Now, the car I'm giving you, giving you $500, is going to take $5,000 to repair it. So your choice is either fix it, spend $5,000, repair it. You got 500 bucks from me, but you got $5,000 to repair it. Or otherwise, get rid of it and buy a new car for $50,000. Those are your two options. That's the same thing that happened with our bridge on 370 at Fort Crook Road. Uh, we, we, we got the bridge. The state gave us some money, not enough money to fix it. Uh, I was told that Papillion was offered us bridge from the state, and they turned it down. Uh, so I, I sure wish we could do something about that, give it back to the state would be, would be my idea. Uh, the other thing is I've been getting calls from people who watch the uh, meetings on, on the website, and I've been told here from the young lady back here that, and also from them, that when I speak, the sound goes off. I know some of you don't like me very well to come up here and speak, but uh, uh, the leader doesn't talk about what I talk about, the World Herald doesn't talk about what I talk about, and now you're kind of cutting off my sound. So this, uh, we'll see if it, uh, what people say about this. Uh, but that certainly should be corrected, so anybody who comes up here should be, should be heard. Uh, the other thing was that uh, after I spoke, I had, uh, I had uh, two people come up to me after I spoke. One was a woman who said that I should not be able to recommend somebody for the at-large position who has financial experience or has business experience. She said I shouldn't be able to do that. I don't know why I can't. Uh, we need some more people with finance experience, business experience on the council. Uh, and I've said the reasons why we shouldn't have before. The other one was uh, Councilman Pricer came up to me and asked for the uh, uh, copy of the, of the uh, balance sheet monthly balance sheet from Papillion. Well, I didn't have time to go get one, but I did talk to them, and I think all you have to do is look in the Papillion website, and I think you'll see a monthly balance sheet there, among other things. Uh, the other thing that uh, happened at that me after I got through speaking, when I, Mr. Pricer, what he did was he, he advised, since city finances were discussed earlier in the meeting, he wanted to make a statement regarding a monthly balance sheet. He stated the council has given all the information regarding the city's, well, anyway, I don't know where that rule came in, where he's able to speak, or any of you able to speak after I speak, if, if I speak anything in the agenda. Maybe it's a new rule I don't know about, I'd like to see it. Uh, and the other thing is that on the, Mr. Preister did talk about indicating that I was, did something slanderous, which I didn't do, but uh, you all got a letter, uh, and it's on my website from ACLU. And basically what is happening, what the mayor reads at the public request we heard at the beginning is not right. You know, uh, if I want to talk about somebody and say they're not doing a good job on the council or uh, one of the appointed <coughs> officials, I have the right to do that. And they, if you read the ACLU letter and look on my website, you'll see that I have that right. I haven't used that right particularly, I don't think, but uh, I certainly do have that right. But thank you for your time. Councilman Blood. I would just ask our attorney to clarify that point that when something is on the agenda and a comment is made during public comment that under state statute, we do have the ability to respond within a reasonable fashion as long as it has previously been on the agenda. Is that not correct? Agenda items can be uh, discussed. Mr. Gifford. Don Gifford again. I want to thank all of you for your commitment to the fire department with voting for that, uh, that grant. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Are there others? I'll go ahead and close a public request to be heard. Item number 15, executive session, Councilwoman Blood. For the protection of the public interest and for the prevention of needless injury to the reputation of any individuals, I move to go into executive session to discuss real estate strategies for city property on Mission Avenue. I need a second. Second. Second by Mr. Mojri. We'll now go into executive session. It is 8 o'clock. And discussions will be restricted to as stated by Councilman Blood. Need a vote. Oh. Vote. vote. Mr. Carmichael, I'm sorry. We have, for, we have a motion to second. We need to vote. All voted yes. Thank you. We will now go into executive session. <laughs>